All right, so obviously the church is universal. So many people, so many colors, so many faces, so many languages and accents. It's crazy. But you know what? The thing is, in our world today, we have things that unite us and divide us. You know, Pontius Pilate was the one who killed Jesus, and he had, or he was responsible for his death. And in some sense, we were all responsible. But Pontius Pilate said something very interesting to Christ in the gospel. He said, "What is truth?" Queen is Peritas, right? If you watch Passion of the Christ, what is truth? And I think in our world today, you know, a lot of people don't believe in the concept of truth. In every, and I'm putting my philosophy cap back on. I am so smart. S M R T. Yes. I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> philosophy with truth. You have to think about the world you live in, right? Because philosophy is basically, you know, the ideas that are present in a society, in a place. So one of the big philosophies in our world today that you have to think about is one called relativism. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. Relativism basically sounds like this. Going back to the Valley Girl. Um, so like, I have my views and you have yours and like, we're both right because like, basically whatever I think is good for me and whatever you think is good for you and we're all right. So don't tell me like I'm wrong because if I tell you you're wrong then I'm right. And what? Yeah, I get confused. Why? <laughs> so it's like that idea that there is no truth, right? Because whatever works for you is good. And there is no objective truth. But the problem, even with that statement, think about this, guys. I know it's early in the morning. But when you say there is no truth, you have just stated a truth, uh. right? <laughs> oh, no. right? There's no truth. You just stated one. Oh. So we have to wrestle with this idea. Now the thing is, there are so many ideas out there. And we are Catholic, we're believers. And there's all these different world religions too, you know? If we were to get all the different world leaders, like bring them back from the dead, you know, you would have Muhammad, you would have Buddha, you would have Moses, you would have Christ, right? And if you were to each to ask them a question about who God is, or if they were God, this, or if they knew the truth. This is what they would say. Muhammad would say, I am a prophet of Allah, right? He wouldn't claim to be God. If you ask Buddha who he was, he would say, I am one trying to seek enlightenment. I'm trying to find the truth, I'm trying to find meaning, right? If you were to, um, I forget who, I, who else I was to. Moses, right? He said, I don't know, I was just hanging around and the bush was on fire, you know? <laughs> Right? So, God was revealing himself to Moses, right? But then if you were to ask Jesus, who are you? You know what he would say? This is straight from the Gospel of John. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is what distinguishes Jesus from any world religious figure. Because he made the claim that he himself was God. And unfortunately, we don't have all the time to look into all the reasons why his words are very credible. But we know for a fact that his words were deep, they were obvious, and that's what got him killed. Because the thing is, he's either the craziest lunatic who ever lived, who told himself and other people that he was God, or he was being honest and truthful. And really, that comes down to where your belief and where your faith lies. But Jesus, he founded a church. He founded a church, and obviously he picked 12 disciples, right? And he taught them his ways. He had them follow him and learn from him. But after he was crucified, died, he resurrected, and ascended back into heaven, he promised a lot of things to the disciples. Because Jesus wouldn't just take off and say, good luck, right? He'd just fly away. Where are you going? Right? He promised that he would send his spirit. But here's the thing, guys. He said to St. Peter, who was the first pope, he said, Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, in the Gospel of Matthew. And guys, this is really important, because you've heard all those St. Peter jokes, right? He's St. Peter's at the, the, the gates of the kingdom of heaven, right? And he holds the keys. It comes from this verse. So St. Peter was given a role to safeguard the church, but moreover, God was promising that he was giving authority to the church to safeguard his teachings, his truth. In another place, Jesus says, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Okay, basically guys, this is talking about church authority, 
right? Because even in Christianity, there are like thousands of different churches. It's like mind-blowing, right? And everyone's reading the Bible, and everyone's saying they know what Jesus is saying about the Bible. And that's why you have thousands of churches. Have you seen this before? Right? You have, what's that guy's name? He has like a really pleasant demeanor on TV. I just hope you get into a Bible-leading church right now. Joe Osteen, right? He makes me smile. He's a good guy, you know? But the thing is, when a thousand different pastors and preachers are saying different things about what a gospel pastor says, that's why you get so much division. So Jesus, knowing this, wanted one church, one body of Christ, one people. God is a uniter, not a divider. And so church authority is the power given by Christ to the church to interpret the Bible and to teach what he taught. 